whatever you are going to do in life, whatever you have as a project, you have to plan for it. As we always know, if you don't plan, that means you're planning to fail. So how do you prepare for marriage? Welcome to another Saturday Live. If you do not know us and you're just finding our page or the YouTube channel, we are the DLBC Singles Group, a group of singles and a few married people who are here as mentors. We talk about marriage, relationship, how to find the right person and how to do marriage in God's own way. And so today, without wasting too much time, I'm going to introduce our other host. First of all, if you don't know me, my name is Princess. I'm coming to you live from Canada. And I have um, our host here, our other admin, Madame Deborah, connecting to us directly from France. You want to say a few words? Yes. Hi. Hello. We talk about how to prepare. How are you preparing for marriage? You know, before you go into a battle, as the Bible said, you have to be prepared. Marriage is not a battle. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just paraphrasing just to say that whatever you are going to do in life whatever you have as a project you have to plan for it as we always know if you don't plan that means you're planning to fail so how do you prepare for marriage when we look through the posts that we see lots of posts asking what is a man looking for in a woman what is a woman looking for in her ideal man it's already tips for ladies, if you're a lady and you listen to, you read those posts, you get to see what are some of the tips that a man is expecting for you to have in a marriage. Some people, they really want to see respect. Some people, they want to see um, a woman that can cook because they like food. <laughs> Some people, they want a woman that can be their friend, a companion, a best friend, a buddy, someone that they can relate with freely. Some other people, oh, I want her to love my family. Lots and lots. The list is long. It's unending. Every man has a different expectation of what his ideal wife should be. And please do well to put you in the comment section. How are you preparing for marriage? How do you think that somebody should prepare for marriage? Let us see what you think. And don't forget to share this video. What are the things that a young woman should put in place? So, um... What are the things that you're putting in place as a young woman? How are you getting ready to be an ideal wife? Um, I, I'll be happy to share with you. I don't know. Do you have anything to say to add? What should be putting in place as a woman? Let's go from a woman's perspective first. Well, then we'll talk about the men. So what should you be putting in place um, in preparation for marriage? How do you prepare for marriage? How do you prepare for marriage? Mm -hmm. um, your preparation, uh, the preparation of a woman for marriage should be uh, in every aspect, I think. Woman should be prepared emotionally. Mm -hmm. She should be prepared psychologically. She should be prepared um, health-wise. She should be prepared financially. She should be prepared to accommodate someone else into her life. Okay. To it. make space to make space for someone into your life. Mm -hmm. uh, most especially if you're a woman and you're not just this lady that you're just out from school, you, you don't really know your left to right. If you are this lady that you, you, you know exactly what you want, um, you have got a job, you have ambitions, you have dreams, you know where you want to be in the next 10 years, uh, you have what you are really looking for you know to achieve as an individual mm -hmm. then in that case you should be looking for someone that is ready that's not going to try to hinder you from achieving uh, that purpose you have in your life okay someone that understands um the um what marriage is all about and okay. that is ready to partner with you okay. and so that it's not going to become a burden and we heal and we hinder you from um, achieving your own personal goals. Okay. Um, yes. All right. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, those are great points. Thank you so much. I can see a few people who have connected. Someone said they connected from Grenoble. Happy to see you, Mr. James from Grenoble. And uh, if you if you want to talk to us, I mean, there's a question you want to add. Please do well to ask your question. I'm saying it over and again, over again, so that you know that. 
we are open to allowing you to, to ask your questions if you want to ask. We, we're working on how to be bringing people live if, if people want to come live also. Yeah, thank you for those great points. So there are a lot of things that a woman should be preparing for, should have in mind um, before getting married. You don't go into marriage blind. I was listening to somebody that asked, is, mar is, is love really blind? Do you get into marriage really blind, like blind to everything? Um, first of all, as Christians, we need to pray, right? We always advise and always focus and hinge and hit on this point that prayer is very important as a primary thing as a Christian, because as Christians, we ask God for everything. We commit our ways to God. The Bible says, commit your way to God and he will bring it to pass. So whatever it is that your vision is, your dreams are, your plans are, you first of all, commit your ways to God. You ask God for direction. You ask God to lead you, to guide you. Okay. So many people believe that um, how can I just ask God? Will God just bring the man and drop him on my laps? You know, God works in mysterious ways. You don't know how God works. I don't know. I don't see. We don't see everything. God works a lot behind the scenes. God has a way of bringing two people together in special ways, in unconventional ways, in ways that you can never understand with your human minds. So that's why you should, first of all, commit your way to God. Just like you pray every morning, God guide me through my day. You talk to God about your marriage and you say, God, this is an important part of my life and I want you to be my guide. You tell God to guide you through your, your marital process, your relationship process, your finding a partner. First of all, then secondly, the person that you want to get married to has to align with you, has to align with your dream. So that as a woman, first of all, you don't go into marriage miserable. Because if you go into marriage after the butterfly in the bellies, you realize that your dreams are not achieved and you start to suffer emotionally, you start to become sad. You are not happy in that marriage because you think that you start to feel useless. Like, okay, what am I? Like, what am I doing for my own life? How am I advancing? How am I making or meeting the purpose of God for my life? Especially if you are someone who is spiritually minded and you have prayed and you know where God is leading you. In regards to your purpose, you know why you are on this earth. You know what God wants to do with your life. You know that God has something more for you than just marriage. And so when you get into a marriage where you think that you're not aligned, your goals are not aligned, then you start to have problems. And before you know it, you start to fall out of love. Okay? Take it from me. Even Christian marriages, Christians sometimes start to fall out of love because they're not doing the right thing. But when you're doing the right thing in your marriage, when you have come into this marriage, you have this mindset of partnership. You have this thought that we're coming to this marriage as a team. It's a teamwork. We're here to make this marriage work. I'm here to help my partner to reach their goals in life. I'm here to help my husband, my wife to be fulfilled in life. When you come with that mindset, it kind of helps you a lot. Now, secondly, empathy. So many people come into marriage with selfishness. They are selfish. They are not empathetic about the other person's needs, about the other person's pains, and about the other person's um, desire or purpose in life. Like you, you don't even empathize. You're just there for your own. Like, I'm just here for me. What can I get? You're not ready to give. Sometimes you have to give of your own time. You have to give of your own, maybe slow down your own um, journey or your own plans or your own goal so that maybe a partner, like for example, I'm going to give you a practical example. You have married a medical doctor and this med medical doctor is on his journey towards becoming a consultant. He has to take a couple of exams. Whether you're a woman or a man, it doesn't matter. So I'm talking about, it can be a male medical doctor, a female medical doctor, whatever the case may be. And you know that this person is already on a faster track towards becoming a consultant. One person has to suppress down, like slow down on break, a little break. Maybe children have come in the process, but one person has to be at home to be the homekeeper, like to keep the home front going so that the other person can spend more time in the library so that the other person can spend more time with their project work and so that the goal of going towards becoming a consultant is achieved. 
And after that person has become a consultant, you have an understanding. And after you have become a consultant, you have reached the peak of your career. Now it's my turn. You now change, you change, you, there's a shift. It becomes like a shift, right? Like a shift job. In a shift job, those who come in the morning, uh, make sure that they are there on time so that they can work. And those who come in the afternoon will be at home resting and then they will come back to take on the shift time, like take on the job from wherever the other person is letting off. And what, what about situations where, you know a lot of people have this mentality, um, mindset that um, it is the woman, is the woman that is to do that shifting. She's the one that is to step down for me so that I can, uh, I can actualize my goal. Mm -hmm. such that um, it comes into the marriage relationship. For example, we are talking about medicine. Yes. Let's imagine that he's an engineer or something and he, he's already working. Yes. Now he comes into the marriage relationship with the opinion that she's to, she's to be the one to, to take care of the home. Mm -hmm. So it's not ready to sup. It's not ready to step aside. It's not ready well, to give any any time, any of his time, mm -hmm. um, so that she can actualize her dream of yeah. becoming important. Yes, well, that's why we're talking about this today, right? Because if you want to have a very happy home, a fulfilled so home, what I'm saying is that is it? Do you think is it gender based? Is it gender based? Is it demand first? No, no, no. It's not about gender based, and that's why I'm talking. I'm saying here that you, you, when you come into the marriage, you should have this discussion of track. You should know the track, track the progress track. Like where is this person going, and what do do we need? And that's a place of courtship. That's why you have to have a thorough courtship. Somebody, one of the leaders, one of the leaders on Facebook, I read his comment, and he was saying something. He said, "If you do not spend time to talk about the real thing during courtship, and you close your eyes and you're talking love, 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 oh, marriage is an eye opener." Marriage will open your eyes. If you think let that me, you're going into marriage let me blind, come, let me then come in there. you don't know no. that there are some. Let me come in there. Do you know that there are sometimes that the two couple, as in the man and the woman, the yes. lady and the man, they're discussing, they are talking, they're talking yeah. about these issues of yeah. Um, okay, presently, for example, the lady is doing already her, her, her second degree, mm -hmm. and the man is not doing his second degree. Yes. And the man comes around to say, oh, I want to get married to you. She accepts his proposal. Yes. And, uh, and during the period of courtship, she tells him, I'll need your help. Because if we went and get married, I'll need your help to maybe wake me up to read, need your help to support me. Because if I get pregnant, um, I'll need your help to be there, to be uh, present in the, in the home. And at least to maybe to be able to work or something so that you can have more, you can have more income because she's now pregnant um, and she's having a school work to do. So that it's better that you are available uh, to work and to be able to provide for the home while I'm, I'm concentrating on, um, on my studies and at the same time um, uh, trying to um make that family that we're looking at just she, she's having the baby the woman is the one that is having the baby yeah know? but that's why look and this is you know we talk real talk here so i need people to even stop this thing off if you have a plan and you're doing your second degree and you know that it's strenuous okay you don't get pregnant immediately after marriage that's, that's the truth Let's be realistic. People need to plan their lives. People need to talk these things through. If you know that you're going to, you're going to go into this marriage and you have a program that's ongoing and you don't know how pregnancy is going to treat you, then you guys should work out something so that you don't get pregnant immediately after marriage until you finish your program. That's, that's just what I'm going to tell. That's what, what I'm going to tell a single lady. I'm not talking hypothesis here. I'm talking, not I'm, yeah, we're advising. Of you see, course, she, she's... She is ready to get. She's ready to to have the. She, 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 yes, it's going to be stressful, but she's not. She's not ready to um, to be a provider and uh, go to school and also be and also uh, mother a baby. 
that, that's going to be stress, stressful for her. She's telling you before the marriage, uh -huh. there's a tendency that we're going to have a baby. Now you should be able to uh, provide for our home. It's, and about, it's about discussion. It's not a woman that just said, you should do this, you should do that. And it's not the man that said, you should, you should. No. It's what friendship is all about. People see that when they talk. Okay, what if we get into marriage? Do you, I don't know how pregnancy is going to be like. I have this program that is ongoing. What should we do? Are you going to, are you saying that it's okay, we leave it open and get pregnant immediately after marriage? And then you'd have to run the home front and have, that's the place of discussion. So yes. if, 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 if they have discussed, yes, if they have, if they have discussed and he has agreed, yes, and he's going to take and care then of the After home. the marriage, yes, after, after the, the marriage, marriage, she gets she pregnant. Does not, she gets pregnant, yes, and he does not carry out what they agreed upon. Well, it doesn't happen in every case. If that's what yes. happens in, in any case where it happens, then I, they, that couple needs some counseling. They need to get some help. Something is going on wrong there. Somebody is not keeping to their promise. And if somebody is doing that deliberately, then that person is going into his marriage to sabotage it. I don't see how many men are really going into their marriage with a plan of sabotaging it. Then why did you get married in the first instance? Now, there are lots of situations of marriage of men who go there because of personal gain for whatever it is. And that's why... We should know why people are getting married first. Why are you getting married to this woman? And this is a question I always ask my husband before I win away. Why are you, why do you want to marry me? Why me? Get that answer straight. Why do you want to get married to this person? And he says that oh, God is leading me. Okay. God is leading me and you are the yes. best for me. You are okay. my best. Because Perfect. I tried on that and it, it failed me oh. and you're my best. That's fine. Then that means that we should be able to work together if we're not going to work together and that begin to be done, that, that's the beginning. When there's problems at the beginning of the marriage, that marriage needs, that family needs counseling. They need real counseling. They need counseling, real counseling. I say real counseling. They need to what go out there. What, 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 what I'm trying to bring out from my point is that. Yes. Um, when you're courting, you have time of talking. Yes. You have time of talking. Mm -hmm. You as an you as the individual that is going into the marriage, you that is a lady, or you you are the one that know yourself. You are the yes. one that know how sincere you are. Yes. About that relationship, you don't exactly know what is going on in the other person's mind. Yes. However, you try to peruse it. Mm -hmm. However, you try to peruse it. He might, he or she might hide the Things. true reason, the true yes. reason why he's coming into marriage relationship with you. Yes. So however, what would you advise the other person? However, you try to be sincere mm -hmm. or you try to be, he might, you know. So the, 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 the thing is, as a woman, yes, uh, I think that there's there are some marriage relationship, there's some marriage relationship that ladies should not get involved in. Number okay, one. Now they're getting married, you are getting married to somebody you don't even know what he thinks about. You are seeing because you have given an example, you are getting married. But you don't know what the other person is thinking. So, what do you advise the lady to do? What's her plan B? Her plan B is that um, she should. Um, for me, from looking at it now today, I think that a lady should not get married if she doesn't have a means of livelihood. That's Good. That, that's a solution. That's a solution right there. She must say, not get the woman, job. even if she has, a, even if she's running a masters. She should make sure she, she has something done. Yes, she must have a okay. job. Great, that's a good a advice. Job. Yes, you should have she a must job have, doing. She people, must have even a if job. Are, because you don't know if that person is going to flip. Now, I know it's difficult. Some people will say, then what's the place of trust? Like, how do you trust that this person? I mean, that's, I mean, this is a not a normal case scenario. Okay. This is a case where one of the parties is not sincere. But for real Christians, children of God. We should not be playing these kind of games. There shouldn't be those kind of games. Does it exist? There are wolves in sheep clothing. Yes. And that's why Madame Deborah is advising you as a lady because you do not know. And if you suspect and if you feel that something is not straight somewhere, then in that case, that's where 
you need to have your contingency plan. Like what's my other plan if things don't go as expected? Me personally, I believe in having a job. Okay, if you ask me and we're going personal now, I'll tell you, I am this kind of lady that believes a woman needs to have her money. I'm not that kind of lady that believes that a woman should depend solely, completely, totally on her husband. I believe that a woman needs to have her money. You need to have money. You need to have something doing. You need to have something that you're doing, no matter what it is, no matter how small it is, no matter how insignificant it is. And as a lady, as a young lady, I went to marriage with some savings. Have your savings. You need money for the rainy day. You, you, you need to. You are single now. You're not married. Have some money that you are saving. 10%. You give God 10%. Try to save another 10%. And if you can, I'm, 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 a, I'm an extreme saver. Okay. If you can, save up to 30% of your salary. Reduce all the expenditure that you don't need. Buying matching bag and shoes, buying, um, I don't know, all the big names, Gucci, and buying the Michael Kors, and buying all the every designers. You mustn't have every designers on the market. Just have a few things that you need. And every other money that you have, try to save it. Have a, here we, we call it tax-free savings account. You can have a tax-free savings account where you're not taxed. It's after your salary, you decide that you're saving this much. And this, this money, it, it doesn't take long for you to accumulate and have a substantial amount in your bank account. It just needs consistency. If you are consistent in your savings, if you are saving your $100 consistently every month, you take $100 out of your salary and you save it. At the end of the year, you have $1,200 saved. And if it's $200 you're saving, you have $2,400, I guess, saved. That's a lot of money. Now, if you are smart enough, you take that money and you invest it into stocks. It's not just sitting in your bank account, but you're also investing it into stocks. It keeps growing. And if you start working early enough, like some young people here out here in Canada, you see them, they, are, they start working as soon, as soon as they're done high school. And you start working really early. Start your savings. You're living with your parents. Why are you spending all your money? Because you're living with your parents and you don't have expenses. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't have savings. And that's what I tell my campus students. I tell them, hey, Make sure that you are saving, no matter how small it is. So save, no matter how small it is. Start saving from that little money. You are already being fed at your parents' house. You are, you are, you are not paying any rent. You, you have a shelter. Sometimes your, your parents are even nice enough. Sometimes they even clothe you. So if you are in that kind of instance, I would expect you to spend, save at least 50% of your money. Okay, and now, if, you if think you that early, if early, you, you are this, for lady, this lady that is saving, Mm -hmm. That is a save that saves money. Yeah, that has money that has been put somewhere. Yes, should she get married to someone that doesn't see that does not see? It's a personal choice, right? <laughs> Marriage is a personal choice. I'm not going to sit here and give any advice to anybody. Marry that's your choice. Is that what you want? Do you want to marry somebody that doesn't have any savings? That says spend drifts. It's your choice. That's why marriage, marriage is not, I mean, if you say love is blind, marriage is an eye opener. You don't go there blindly. If you're saying things that you think that this thing is not going to work, this relationship between me and this guy is not going to work. Why are you going there? Why are you wasting your time? There is also so, ample time to jump out where you need to. If you think that it's red flags, jump out of there. Another thing is this issue of you're preparing. You say pre the, the topic is how to prepare for your marriage. Yes. When a couple is to prepare for their marriage. Are they preparing with their family members? Are they preparing? Are they pre should they prepare with having that back of your of their minds that my family members are going to contribute for me to do my wedding ceremony? Well, I I know many cultures where they do that. They think that marriage is a family affair, and then they are contributing money. But I don't think that a man, an able-bodied man, should be getting into marriage. A responsible man should be getting into marriage with the thought that I have nothing and it's my marriage, it's my family members are going to contribute for my marriage. Because if you if you go there and you you say that your family members are going to contribute to make the marriage a reality, then what do you how do you plan to feed? Because for Is example, family members going a, to a guy that has saved two hundred thousand naira, 
Yes. And his, and his wedding is going to cost him one M. Okay, let's talk, let's talk in, in dollars or euros. I don't know. I no, don't know about, in so dollars, in dollars if it's in dollars, you, let's imagine that. He has saved, let's say, $500. He has saved $500, saved, has saved $500 yes. and his wedding is going to cost him $5,000. Then oh, you're asking... Yes. Where does he get the money? Where, where, is, should, he, should he even think of... Should this so it's not ready about? yet. It's not ready. He needs to save more. He needs to work more. He needs to build. His marriage is his marriage. He does his marriage himself. Now, if he thinks that he wants to do a marriage that's flamboyant, he should wait until he gets the money for the flamboyant wedding and a little more for after the wedding. Otherwise, he cuts his coat. With $500, with $500, what can, what can he do? What can he do? What then he's not ready. That's the, that's the point. The point is that he's not ready. With $500 cannot, I mean, he cannot... He, can, he cannot pay his house rent. Neither he, he cannot pay his house rent. But if he has a job, business. if he has a job, that means his whole life is not dependent on the five hundred dollars, right? He has something that is coming in on a monthly basis. I mean, after all, he has been living before. He has an apartment where he's living. So if you know that he's staying, he's staying with his parents, he's squatting with his parents in his parents' house. Okay, so if he's staying in his parents' house, then first of all, the marriage committee will not let him marry. That's the first thing. They won't let him marry because he has to have his Go to the marriage committee. They will ask you where you're going to do it. And you tell them that, she, he can tell them that he's waiting until the sister accepts so that he can rent the house. What we, uh, will the marriage committee no, no, tell no, him no, that? No, it doesn't work like that. No, the marriage committee doesn't work like that. They want to know where you live. We know that. They, they, that's what they do in our church. They, they want to know where you live. They ask you where you live. They always ask you where you live, except in situations where there is going to be any plan of relocation, right? And if there's plans of relocation, maybe the, the lady is, is based abroad and the guy is living in Africa, then we definitely know that that family is not going to settle in Africa. Now, how, how can the marriage committee control that if the guy is planning to travel out? Then that means if the guy is planning to travel out and is going to join the woman, then the woman should have a place where he's going to stay because he's going to join her, right? Definitely, you have something. He should have something in his hand just before he's able to get a job over there. And if the case, if, if it's a, the reverse is the case, and he's the he one, he have something in his hand. He's the man. He's the man bringing the woman. He's the man bringing the woman abroad. Then he definitely has a place to stay where they're going to live. And if both of them are traveling together, which we see in many cases, then they should have money together that. They're going to have for like the first two, three months before they get a job, wherever they're going to settle at. So, so what for example, what? approximately, where should how much should it be? How much should I, he be having? Me and you cannot say how much they should be having. It's not our job, <laughs> really. It's between them. They know how much they're going to they're going their, their expense is going to be, they know where they are going to. It's not our job here on this on this conversation to decide how much they should have in their hands. You should have enough for your first two months rent. Both of you should have enough money for the first two months of rent. Like, for example, families who move to Canada to come and settle here, the Canadian government always will ask them, how much do they have in their bank accounts? They should have a minimum amount. That, and I say an amount where that the Canadian government expects a single person to have to be able to move to a new country. I think it's between $10,000 and $12,000, something like that. And then for a couple, we're talking of $20,000 and above. And if you don't have that kind of money, they won't even give you, you won't even get the visa to start with. Which means that that money that you have in your bank account is what you're going to use to settle in your new location. You need to pay rent. You need to pay your transport. You need to feed. You need to pay your bills, your utilities and stuff. Right? Before you get a job, yes, you're going to look for a job and everything. There are helps. There are government, there's government support to help newcomers and everything. But you need to have your first money. The government support is not going to pay your first month. And you're not going to go and tell uh, the, the landlord or the, the owner of the house that, hey, I just came from, I don't know what country and I don't have money. Can I just stay in your house? It doesn't work like that. You'll be homeless. You'll be homeless. So it's just to show that even if because you're moving to a country, you have to make those kind of plans. How much more if you're getting married? You have your own plans in place. And so 
I'm sorry, but I know that there was a time when we made a group, there was a post, somebody wrote a post where they said that the marriage committee asked the men to say, um, the, the men, somebody saying, I need it, don't know what I want to know. But I don't know what you mean. Write your question more explanatory so that I can understand what you're saying. I don't really understand that, that comment that you wrote. If you can write it a little bit, add more flesh to it so I can know what you're talking about. So, um, as I was That's saying, Melitos, Melitos Emmanuel. Yes, Melitos Emmanuel. Please write your write more. Give more flesh to this. Is it a comment or whatever it is you're writing? Please give more flesh to it. I'll be able to answer your question if I understand correctly. Um, so if the government is having that, if the Canadian government has those rules and regulation for new settlers, when you're getting married, you're settling into a new life, right? Common sense tells you that you, you should have some money. So if you're not ready for marriage, it's not, look, I'm not saying that the fact that you're not able to marry now doesn't mean that you're not going to marry each other later, right? You can still get married, but maybe now is not the right time. So that's why you need to wait. And that's why we're talking about how to prepare. Preparation is, preparation entails you knowing the right time to get married. Am I supposed to get married now? Is it the right time for us to get married? Do you have what we need in place to make this marriage worth it, to make this marriage happy? And as we said, the other post that the, the post we're talking about, where the marriage committee, I don't know, they really, I don't know if they really, really ask you how much you have in your bank account. I know they ask you what's your means of livelihood, like what's your source of income. They ask that question. I know they do that. But let's say the marriage committee does not ask you, me as a woman, I want to know. And that's why I tell you this, don't be gullible. I want to know like, okay, this is how much I earn. This is how much I have as money. What do you have? And I don't mind you showing me your bank account. It's not a crime. It's really not a crime for me to and see if, your bank statement. Shows, anyway, it's, it's complicated. There's nothing you, wrong in me asking to see your bank. And you know, some ladies are very, you know, there are some things you're not shy about. There are some things you don't try to be nice about. Or as a baby say, nice. You don't have to be nice about some things. This is real life. This is your life. This is you and him going to live together afterwards. So if he tells you he has one million and you have any doubts that he doesn't have one million, ask him, I want to see your bank account. Yeah, In the last six if, months. If it's, not, if it's not a straightforward person, that's the reason why we're always saying that people should pay enemy. That's just the truth. Yes, so the but point is that we're talking about here, we're talking about a, you marrying a Christian. Yes. We're talking about you a Christian. And if you notice, yes. are you a child of God? I expect the spirit of God to tell you that this is a wrong relationship you are into. And when the spirit of God tells you, hey, red flag, this guy started telling some lies. You've noticed some lies. Some, his stories are not adding up. You, you have some credibility issues with him or with her. Because let this also, it can, it can be on both sides. I'm not, this side, this is not a man or male or yeah, gender. It can, it can be on both sides. Both sides. So if you yeah. notice that this person that you're trying to get married to tells lies, there is credibility issues with them. They're not straightforward. They tell you this and somebody else, their friend meets you tomorrow and tells you something else. And you're like, ah, no, she didn't tell me that. And you're like, heck, why am I hearing different stories? You go straight on, confront this person and say, you are telling me different stories. You tell me this and I hear that. What do you want me to believe? Anyway, the truth is that I don't, I don't advise any lady to get married to a liar. Yes, yeah. so once I lied already in that relationship, I'm sorry. Over any lies, it's going to continue. If you it's discover that continue. what it's it tells you, when you, it's not again. you, you are you realize that the guy told you a lie, there's no need to patch up. He's not patch up. Because if he says he's sorry, he god, I was afraid this that just just back it up. No, Serve him what you call breakfast. Serve it to him because yeah. that guy just is going to tell you lies all your life. life. Yeah, move on with your life. You know he's telling you lies. And if I mean, that lady, if you discover, mm -hmm. you're, you're, as you're talking, you discover that she, maybe you're asking her some questions about her past life or what have you, and, and you discover that there is anything fishy about this lady. She's not telling you the whole truth, yeah. or she's hiding some information from you. Yeah. Once you discover, mm -hmm. do not marry a liar. Yeah, because it lies, lies has some other strings attached to it. A liar is a thief. You can all forms of things you can attach to it. So do not marry a liar because a liar is not a child of God in the first yeah. place. So it's an unequal yoke already. Mm -hmm. 
An have, unequal yoke. The Bible tells us not to go into unequal yoke already. If the man and is you know, unequal yoke is also, unequal yoke is also very broad. It's not many a times we have always looked at it from the angle of unequal yoke being just marrying and not marrying an unbeliever. But someone that goes to church that is even singing in the choir or is an usher or has always been in church all through his or her life, but is a liar mm-hmm. or a cheat, yeah, or, or steals from time to time. Or is it just not straightforward? You just notice that it's deceptive. Mm-hmm. Such a person is not meant to be, it's not a husband material. It's not a husband material for a child of God. If you're not a child of God, if you are like him, or are, okay, mm-hmm. you can always, both of you can lie to each other, you know? So then you'll see, you, you have to, he will be inventing his own. You also, you are inventing your own. Everybody will be inventing their own. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But, thank you, James. Thank you for hanging in here. We're happy to have had you. You said you have to go. Yes, it's okay. Okay. Thank you for connecting you. today. Have a good work time. Yes. So, so if if the person is a liar, you, you can't do anything about it. You just have to let him go to the cross, go to the Savior, let him be converted. Mm-hmm. And he cannot just come back to tell you, I've given my life to Christ. Yes, yeah. just marry me and blah, blah, blah. You have to see the fruit. You have to see that yeah. you really, really converted. Exactly. You have to see that you really converted. Exactly. Do, just, do not just fall for any lies or any gimmicks or any crocodile cry or any manipulation or any pressure from people, uh, brothers and sisters or, or church leaders or that will come to talk you over to tell you that, yes, it will just bring me out of here. Don't worry. Yes, we also fall. Uh, you might fall. You just, once once you marry the wrong, if you get married into with this person like a liar, yes, if is a and is a wrong marriage, once the marriage is sealed, all those people that came to advise you to continue, they will tell you to manage. Yeah, well, they can't help you anymore. You they cannot help you. Anymore. They cannot help you anymore. They cannot help you anymore. Yeah, but that's why you have to just get it right. You have to get it right. Yes. Yeah. So those are great points. Thank you so much for um, for that contribution. Uh, so as, as we said, make sure number one point, spiritual, spiritual, um, the spiritual aspect needs to be examined. You have to be sure that this person that you're getting married is actually born again, is actually a Christian, has actually given their life to Christ and by their fruits, you shall know them. The fruits of that person must cannot be opposite of their profession. If they profess to be Christians, they should display the Christian attitude and attributes, patience, love. They should display kindness. They should be di- display truthfulness. They should display long suffering. You know, all the fruit of the spirit that they just look through the, the fruit of the spirit. And that's what this is encompassing. Love is all of the street, street, fruit of the spirit should be part of love. Somebody says they love you and they love God. You know, they love God first of all. And they say they love you. They should have the fruit that shows that the, that the love of God is in their hearts. Charity. The fruit of the Spirit that we see in that verse of the Bible that talks about charity. Charity is kind. Charity does not deceive. Charity, you know. Not. All of those, all of that list. Go there, read it through. And ask yourself, is this person displaying these things? Am I also displaying these things? Because you yourself have to show what you expect. Whatever you expect from somebody, you should be ready to display those things. Some people, some people want more than what they can give. You cannot want all these things and you're not ready to display or also have these things in your life. Okay? Treat others, other people the way you want them to be treated. So when you go into marriage, do it as you would have treated Jesus. Each, if each person in the marriage is thinking, I want to treat my, my spouse like I would have treated Jesus, marriages would be very sweet. It would be a beautiful home that you would have. You take away everything, all our selfishness, everything, all our, you know, self-centeredness. You take all of those out and you treat the person the best way that you would have treated any human, like you would have treated our Lord Jesus Christ, like Jesus was watching you, was sitting there in that home. When you make Christ the center of your home, you're going to marry with, Christ has to be at the center of this home. You will live your life, not for any man, not for her, not for him, but for Jesus. 
And when you live your life with that consciousness of Jesus, the Jesus factor, the presence of the Lord always continuously in your marriage, you will find that your marriage will be beautiful because you will not be so carnal, so you know, fleshy and thinking about what am I gaining? Why is she doing this to me? Why is she not doing this to me? And sometimes the life you live can rub off. Like the person will see Christ in you and might even break the person. The Bible says is you heap coals of fire upon their head. Because many times we want to, to want to have our own pound of flesh, and that's the reason why sometimes things go wrong. I know we're humans, me inclusive. I'm talking to myself here. We're humans. Sometimes we want to fight the battle ourselves. But if you learn to uh, give it all to the Lord, be patient, understand if you're a man that you're marrying a woman, and that a woman is just a woman. Sometimes you try to understand her. You treat her like the Bible says, as you as you treat <laughs> weaker vessels. You understand her, take her like your younger sister. How would you treat your younger sister? No matter how she's behaving, you want to be nice to her, you want to try your best to make her understand that you have the best for her. Even if you're trying the best and you think that she's not, she doesn't understand what you're trying to, to do and she's not seeing that you're trying to help her, then leave it out and continue to be your best. Don't try to be revengeful. Don't try to be, you know, to just change and say, okay, I'm going to change it for her. I'm going to show her that me too, I can be a beast. I want to show her that me too, I can be evil. Me, I can show her that I can be mean. You don't have to do that. If you are living for Christ and you are living with the consciousness of going to heaven, then with time, even if that person uh, has fallen out of grace, you might eventually win that unbelieving spouse. So that's that's all that me I want to add. I think it's a topic that we're going to talk about again another time when we have more people. This is a topic that we always have new insights to and that you more examples will come up that will make us to talk more about this topic. I hope that you are blessed by this um, conversation that we had today. We don't want to spend too much time because we, we started a little late and we have to go, to go and start our Saturday. Uh, thank you so much for, for for staying here, all of you guys that were here, I'm so happy to have seen you, James, Melitos, um, and um, Ed Young. So many of you guys that were here. I'm so happy that you that you stayed, you hung in here. God bless you so much. And see you um, next, next week, week, every yeah. Saturday, same time, same place. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this video, share it, and um, follow the page so that you can be notified whenever we have... Uh, we have another live. Don't forget that we have our monthly prayer, the first Friday of every month. It's going to be on Facebook Live. So if you are here and you're wondering when this prayer and where it holds, it holds on Facebook Live right here. So follow the page, share the page to your friends, let them follow it so that they don't miss out on the prayer. It's a beautiful prayer session and God has been blessing us through the prayer session. God bless you. We're not going to spend too much time. I hope that you're preparing for your marriage. Even if you're not in a relationship, there are the things that you need to be doing as a woman that will show that you're preparing for marriage. You can start getting ready, even if you're not in a relationship, get yourself ready financially, spiritually, academically, emotionally, in every aspect of your life, you can get ready for marriage so that when the marriage comes, it's not that time that you start, oh yeah, I need to fix myself up. You will be going into the marriage ready and god bless you Until yes next time, the, the woman should be ready and, and the, the men, men should be ready yes men should be ready too. yes no thank you so much bye okay. see you next week à la prochaine au revoir, au revoir.